Hello and welcome back to the Operation Hard Store Stop SDK. My name is Sergeant Samples and today our project is to make a map completely from scratch. By the time we're done we're going to have a map that looks something like this. A basic landscape, a handful of flags, and the ability for the bots to move through the map and capture those flags. Uh, so let's jump right in. The first thing you're going to want to do is to actually create a mod. That can be done when you either first start up the SDK It'll, it'll have a, a little pop-up that says create mod or at the top of the editor you can hit create mod. And when you do it's going to bring up this. This is where you can set your mod name. I'm going to call this demo map. Set your author name. I am Sergeant Samples. And then you can put in a description, an author URL, things of that nature. I'm going to skip it and hit create mod. And when you do, it's going to bring up this asset. Now, this is an incredibly important asset to have in your mod that tells the game what it's looking for within this particular mod. So if you have a game mode, a faction, or a map, then this asset is what points to the folders that are going to be inside your mod. So game modes go in core, factions go in factions, and maps go in maps. So go ahead, and if you're going to include all three of these, then go ahead and leave this by default. Or if you're just going to have a map, then you can delete the other two, like this. Uh, let's hit save on that and close this out. So it is super important when you make a brand new mod that this pink data asset that you see here sits in the top content folder of that mod and does not move. Because this mod asset is what is pointing to the things that are included in your mod in certain folders. So let's create one of those folders that we're going to need right now by right-clicking inside of this folder, hit New Folder, and we're going to call this Maps to put our map in. Open that up, right-click again, and hit Level. It's going to call it New World. Uh, to talk a little bit about naming conventions, I think that it's super important to use something consistent based on whatever your mod is. For right now, I'm going to just call this Demo Map. But it's good to get in the habit of using a, a consistent naming convention early on. For example, uh, for Operation Hooverville, which is one of the maps that I make for my plastic factions, I use PF for plastic factions, underscore op Hooverville, the name of the map, underscore AAS, which is advanced and secure, the default game mode that comes with Operation Harsh Door Stops SDK. Right next to it, we have PF Op Hooverville CTZ for Capture the Zone, which is a King of the Hill inspired game mode from Modder K's, whom you can find on Steam. It's a good fun game mode. You ought to try it out one of these days. So for now, we're going to call this Demo Map. But in the future, remember that your map name, you want to use a consistent naming convention, and you may need to use that map name if you're going to open it with console commands or use it for servers in the future. Just bear that in mind. So we're gonna open this up and it's just a black screen. We have nothing in it. So first and foremost, what we're gonna place down is a landscape. If you come up here to the top of the screen, hit modes and landscape, and we're going to create a landscape. We can select a material to use as our, as our basic floor, let's find some kind of grass. And then I don't know too much about the settings related to the sizes and whatever. So I'm going to use the default and just hit create. Now it's still black. We haven't added any kind of lighting yet. So hit go back up to your modes and select select. That'll make that landscape tab go away. I'm going to widen out my window a little bit here. And the next thing we're going to need is the Place Actors window. If you don't have this somewhere visible in your editor, you can find it by going to Window at the top and find Place Actors in about the middle. And then dock that wherever you'd like. I keep it right here next to my content browser. So inside of this Place Actors window, you need to find three things to start. Directional light. Let's place that in the world. Well, we're starting to get a little bit of lighting, and this is not a good texture for this by the look of it. Let's change our landscape material. There we go. It's a little better. 
you can see that we're getting a lighting rebuilt warning. That is because this light is currently set to stationary. OHD does not use stationary or static lights. It really only uses movable lights. That's pretty common in video games these days and allows characters to cast dynamic shadows as they move through a world. So pretty much all of your lights need to be set to movable. And you can change that by on the details panel on the right hand side under transform. Select there's stationary, static and movable. Select movable and that will make that warning disappear save real quick next thing we're going to need here is atmospheric fog drag that into the level and finally a skylight so you can type sky and grab skylight that also needs to be set to movable these are just the most basic things that you're going to need to make your level lit so we can see what we're doing and there's about a million and one settings that you can use on these different things, but that is definitely the subject for other videos, other tutorials. There's a lot more people on YouTube who've talked about that in, in Unreal Engine 4. So I highly recommend looking for people who know a lot more about those things, but that's not the subject of this video. Uh, next thing we're going to need are three capture points. So coming down to your place actors, type in cap or capture. And you're looking for this BPHD capture point base. Drag that into the world. And we're going to need three of these. And you can keep dragging them out from your browser here, or you can click on it, hold Alt next to the space bar, and drag out along one of the axes. And it will duplicate it into the world. So now we have three capture points. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this one around so it's facing toward the objective when players spawn on it. So to set these up, we're going to need to tweak some settings here. Start to type capture in the details panel on the right hand side and we have capture settings. So under capture settings we're going to set one to red. On the other side we want to set that to blue and then the middle one we're going to leave no team. Other capture settings here include if you want to give it a specific name. Um, the capture radius is how big the circle around that flag is for the AI and other players to be able to capture it. I recommend a thousand. The AI tend to spread out. So if this zone is too small, that there won't be enough bots inside the zone to actually capture the flag and move the game forward. So I recommend a thousand. You can get away with a little bit smaller, but this is the number that I've used the most. We want the middle one to be recapturable. That's the next checkbox below capture radius. The base starting flags, I always uncheck that recapturable box. If it is recapturable, that means that the AI will advance on it. But I want these to serve as permanent spawn points that the AI or enemies cannot capture. So I uncheck the recapturable box. If you don't want it to work that way, you can leave them recapturable and go down three more options to provide spawn point when under attack and check that. So players will still be able to spawn on this flag even if it is being contested. By default, under AAS rules, if a flag is under contest, players can't spawn on it unless this checkbox is checked. But that does mean that players will be spawning potentially right where they can be instantly killed. That's why this checkbox is unchecked by default. So the best thing to do, in my opinion, for these kinds of bases that are going to serve as permanent spawn points is uncheck, provide spawn point when under attack, and uncheck recapturable. Next thing we need to set up are the routes. So a route is literally the flow of combat through a map. So right now we only have one route going from blue to red, but I can quickly show how to make more routes. We're going to duplicate these out. And now I want to have three routes on this map. So we're going to change this one here on the right hand side to be three. 
under under possible routes. On this one, under possible routes, we're going to make that two. And on this one, we're going to leave it at one. So now we have three routes, left, middle, and right. On the starting points, we need to add two more, two more routes here. So possible routes are one, two, and three. And then we need to do the same on the blue flag. So an even easier and quicker way to do this is once you've set this up once, you can right click under possible routes, hit copy, go to the other flag, and paste. And now we have three possible routes under both of these flags, consisting of left, middle, and right. Next thing to set up is the tiers. And tiers is the order of objectives and they always need to count up or down depending on which way you're looking at it. So from this starting flag, if this is gonna be left at tier one, then this middle flag needs to be set to tier two and the blue flag on the other side needs to be set to tier three. So from the blue flag's perspective, we're going three, two, one, or from the red flag, we're going one, two, three. And then these outside flags will all need to be set the same, to be set to Tier 2. So now we have three routes, with each of these being set up in the middle. If you want to have more than three flags on a given route, then we just need to change our tiers to number up accordingly. So we're going to have this flag start at Tier 1, this one at Tier 2, this flag will be Tier three, then four, and make the other base tier five. So we're always counting up or down based on the direction, going one to five or five to one. Now the best thing about this, whether this is intentional or a bug, this is the best thing about this, is that when there are missing numbers on a given route, it will intentionally skip them. So this is still just going one, two, five now, but the route will still work. And just to prove it later on, I'm gonna set this to four, and we're gonna see that this is still gonna show all three routes as working. But this is counting from one to five, but even though we don't have we have some missing numbers on this particular route, it is still going one, four, five, or one, two, five, and it still works. Uh, but now we have all three routes set up with the correct routes and tiers on these flags. So the next thing we're going to need to get some bots moving through the level is a nav mesh bounds volume. Go back down to your place actors window and type in nav and you're looking for nav mesh bounds volume. This is a wireframe cube that will generate a nav mesh for AI actors to use. So we want to make this big enough that it uses the entire playable area. So I'm going to drag it out around my flags and then make it tall enough to go around it. It'll obviously need to be higher if you have buildings that you want the, flag, the AI to use or lower if you're going to take your terrain uh, down into the, into the ground. Um, so bear that in mind if you're going to make steep valleys or anything like that, that they could go outside of the nav mesh bounds volume. But regardless, this is needs to encompass your entire playable area. And then just to check that the nav mesh bounds volume is doing its job, we can hit P on the keyboard and it's going to show the nav mesh that is generated inside of that area. So this is, denotes the entire playable area that the AI is able to use. So if I place down something in the world, like this building, it carves the nav mesh around that object that has collision for players. And we can see there's a separation here, whoops, there's a separation here between the ground and this platform on the building. Because it's separated, the AI doesn't know that it can go up those stairs. There are ways around doing those kinds of things that I'll just have to cover in another video. But for now, just know that this nav mesh is what the AI is able to use. 
Next thing we're going to need are mini map markers. Let's hide the nav mesh again. If you go to your place actors window again and just clear out your whatever words you had there, the first thing you're going to see is empty actor. I'm going to take this empty actor and I'm going to place it on each uh, some opposite corners. So when I place it down in the world, go over to your world outliner on the right hand side and I'm going to rename this minimap1. Then we're going to go to the opposite corner over here. Place down another empty actor and call this minimap2. These are obviously going to be used to generate the minimap, and you need to generate the minimap before you hit play, otherwise it might crash your editor. So let's save real quick. Unreal Engine is notorious for crashing a lot. So next to details, I have world settings. If you don't see world settings anywhere, go to window, and below place actors, you'll find world settings. Click that and then you can dock it anywhere in your editor that you want. And you have a lot of options that are important in here. We're going to have to set here in a minute. But if you come down a ways, find Minimap. And under Boundary Marker A, hit the drop down. And this is a list of everything that's in your world. Find Minimap 1 and Minimap 2. You can also select something by using the eyedropper that's next to it. Uh, this is my preferred method, is to place an empty actor at your map boundaries and then find those in this drop-down and hit Generate Minimap. And so it's created this minimap texture. It's very basic, obviously. We can sort of see our flags here and this building that we placed down earlier. So we, now that we've generated our minimap and we have our nav mesh down, Next thing to do is to set up the teams, to select the teams. Scrolling all the way back to the top in World Settings, find Team Setup at the very top. You can change your starting tickets. Tickets are the number of lives a team has. So when you die and respawn, that uses a ticket. Uh, I'm going to set mine to 250, make the game last a little bit longer. Faction Info Class. Three options down from that is Faction Info Class. This is where you select what faction this map will be using. Uh, I'm going to find BP HD Faction Info PMC for the Blue 4 team. And for Op 4 team, let's find Insurgents. So now that we've done that, each team is set up with 250 tickets. We've set our teams. The last thing to really do here is to go to game mode override just below that, find advance and secure. Not advance and secure base, team deathmatch doesn't really work, and I have a bunch of other game modes from various uh, asset packs that I've downloaded, but what you want is advance and secure. And that includes all of the default uh, options here. We have our character, our HUD, our controller. These are all the things that are wrapped up inside the game mode. So in the future, if you want to tweak those things to be in your game mode, you'll need to make sure that those are selected in these drop downs. So we've now selected our game mode. While we're here, scroll down a little bit more, go down to world, map info, and this checkbox right here, visible in map select UI, check that box. This checkbox is what determines whether or not your map is visible in the menu in game so that you don't have to open it with console commands. This is especially important if you're looking to do a lot of testing. Uh, this is also the area where you can set the map display name. You can put in a description, although I don't think it's currently displayed anywhere. You can set a thumbnail image. Thumbnails are typically 1920 by 1080 and the banner image is 941 by 106. So we're going to save real quick and let's, moment of truth, let's test this out. We go up to the top here and hit play. Okay, we can zoom in. We can see that we have our five flags here. And just to test this out and make sure that all three routes are working, if you hit the tilde key, which is up by your escape button, or uh, it might be something different on other keyboards, but the 
the tilde key is the console command key, whatever you use, and type in restart level. And it's going to select a different route at random. So we saw that our five flag in the middle works, the one on the right works, and there's our one on the left. So all three are working. That's actually pretty far away that we have to zoom in a little bit to even see our flag. So that's easy to fix. We can hit escape to go back out, find your minimap markers in the world outliner over here. Let's move those a little bit closer to the flags. Um, you don't want them too close because it does mean that your flags could actually be off the minimap, meaning you can't spawn. So this is probably about right so that they're not too far, uh, it's not too close, not too far. We're gonna do the same with the other one. Move both of these right here. Go back to your world settings and let's generate a new minimap. There we go, looking a lot better. That's gonna be much easier to see. Save that. And let's hit play again. Yep, we can see that that is much better. That is a much closer to what we want to be able to see. Now to spawn the bots and make sure that that's working, hit your console command again and type in add bots and a number of bots you want to spawn. I always use 30, but I'm pretty sure it's actually capped at something lower than that, like 12 or 16. But there you have it. The bots are spawned. They're actually shooting at each other. Let's jump. Contact! Get the fire! I see one! So the bots are actually moving through the world. They're starting at this flag. They're moving to that one. Those guys are moving to the other flag. And now they're moving towards the middle. So this is actually working completely perfectly. This is just what we want. And there you have it. We have built a map completely from scratch. So best of luck to you. Hope this helped. And if you have questions, you can leave them in comments on this video. You can send me a message on Steam, Sergeant Samples, same name. Or the best option is to post your questions in the OHD Discord. And I'll leave a link to that in the description. But good luck with your map. And you all have a great day.